Hi, everybody. Welcome tonight to Wednesday Night's Inspiration at New Beginnings Chapel. We are so excited that you are here, and I pray that you'll just enjoy the choruses that Kehlani has chosen for us to sing tonight, and that you'll join in with us as we start out with the very first one at Calvary. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died. Multiply to me, there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. By God's word at last my sin I learned, then I trembled at the law I spurned, till my guilty soul in glory turned to Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. And there was multiplied to me. There my burden soul found liberty at Calvary. Now I give to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now my rapture soul can only sing at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. that brought me down to man Oh, the mighty gulf that God did spend at Calvary Mercy there was great and grace was free Pardon there was multiplied to me There my burden soul found liberty at Calvary Join us in prayer, won't you? Thank you, Father, so much for today for your love for your mercies, which are new every morning, and your grace, which truly is amazing, Lord. For your love that reaches down and touches every soul, Father. And your blessings, which outnumber the stars. I praise you, Father, for everyone who is watching tonight or who will be watching in days and weeks and months to come of this broadcast. And pray that it will touch their hearts. Whatever they're going through, whatever is transpiring in their lives. I pray, Father, that they will know that you are in control, that you have it in your hands, and that you love them. You love them so much that you gave your Son to die on a cross for the redemption of our sins. And so, Father, may we remember that when you're going through the toughest of times, that you are there, that you love us, that you'll never leave us. Father, that you are our Savior, you are our King, you are our God. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight, we'd invite you to send your prayer requests to 509-309-0958 by texting them there, or you can comment below on the broadcast here on Facebook, and we'll see those a little bit later in the service. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining.
catch a gleam of glory bright, but still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's a of ten thousand to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see all I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me me here while I live by faith and do his blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I have nothing now to fear. With his manna he my hungry soul shall fill. And sweeping up to glory to see his blessed face where rivers of delight shall ever Well, tonight, we're glad that you joined us. Um, if you are not in the loop, and maybe you don't attend here at New Beginnings, but you'd like to know things that are happening from time to time, you can do that by getting in the loop, and that's our communication system, and we do that via text and email. All you have to do is text the word loop to 509-309-0958, and fill out the information that's requested. Make sure you include the email address that it asks for and uh, your name, of course, so we know who we're communicating with. And that will get you in the loop and let you know things that are happening here at New Beginnings Chapel. Also let you know some prayer requests as they come about. And so we'd just like to have the opportunity to keep in touch with you and let you know the things that take place. Tears so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. Jesus, Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Without Him, I can do nothing.
talk and we are so glad that you guys are able to join us uh pastor uh, uh um, <laughs> josh it's one of those long days already for me um josh is sharing uh and did share on sunday uh as he brought to you the scriptures from first peter 5 1 through 10 and so uh uh josh as you uh talked about anchors and i sure appreciate you uh, standing in for us as we were yeah. gone this weekend it was uh, kind of a crazy, crazy week with everything that has been going on. 
And um, just a couple of things, too, before you kick into that scripture. This Saturday, we have uh, Pastor Randy's memorial service here at the church from, it's going to be from 2 to 4 o'clock this Saturday afternoon. Uh, and then our regular services are this Sunday at 9 and 10.30. And then also our sunrise Easter service is coming up on, um, I believe it's uh, April the 17th. And so uh, we want to make sure that you guys are all kind of aware of what's going on. And so, um, you know, I'm excited to hear <laughs> about, I know, I'm excited to hear about your message let me see if I can. It's, uh, no, it's not going to work. Oh, did there's you jump? A, there's okay. a critical thing missing. A critical out of error there. Yeah, okay. It's called a battery. So, so uh, um, no, so, we're not good. So, Josh, I can click this all day long. It's not going to do it. So, Josh, why anything. don't you share with us a scripture that you shared this morning and lead us into this uh, message that you that you brought to the congregation? So we uh, we talked about uh, kind of becoming each other's anchors and being able to anchor each other in Christ as we go through the struggles and stuff throughout our lives and mm -hmm. the fact that we need to have multiple different anchors yep. and multiple people that we can count on to um, be there for us because as we all know we, life gets busy things get crazy sometimes you can't you're, you have people uh, that you are looking for and they're busy or they're mm -hmm. They have their own stuff going on. So right. the more anchors you have to to try and help you grab on to Christ, is, uh, the better off you can be. And uh, we start off with First Peter 5, 1 through 10. And now a word to you who are elders in the churches. I too am an elder and a witness to the suffering of Christ. And I too will share in his glory when he is revealed to the whole world. <clears throat> As a fellow elder, I appeal to you, care for the flock, at, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Don't lord over the people assigned to you, your assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. And when the great shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of never-ending glory and honor. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. And all of you dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another, for God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you. He will place you on a firm foundation, all to the power of him forever. Amen. Man, that is all wrapped into a uh, <laughs> huge uh, statement to us as Christians. Um, and Paul says, you know, he's going he's gonna to be there with him, you know, in his glory. And he said, and we can be there. In his glory. So, what um, you shared a little bit about your history. Just uh, kind of tell tell me a little bit how Sunday went and uh -huh. what you sensed. And I felt like it went well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like to go off of a um, outline more than like a written out script, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. because I, I would lose myself in the script you, and not you, know where yeah. I was at. Yeah. And and I just find it a little bit easier for me. I, I know I didn't hit every point on this. That's uh -huh. why I don't like handing them out to people uh -huh. because I know I'm not going to hit every point because uh -huh. one reason or another. <laughs> yeah. But I thought it went well. We had one person come back for the second time. So both services, huh? Or, yeah. Well, tell me. I don't me, know. Tell if me that was because of me, uh -huh. I'm not going to say it was. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, when, when you say here the church needs to treat each other as family, and we see mm-hmm. that that's what Scripture was saying, um, uh, are we always able to agree with each other as family members? Are we, no. Um, and, and do we just then leave the church and we say, well, I'm not going to... I'm not going to stay around. I'm going to take my toys and go somewhere else. Or, or do we, as a fa- I mean, as as family, your eight, nine children that you've got um, are not able to say, "I don't want to be a part of this family anymore. I'm leaving. I'm going to another family." When they get mad at each other, um, you teach them how to work things out. Yeah. And so, uh, what other thoughts did you have on that? Um, uh, when it comes to you said it, when uh, but when push comes to shove we are there for each other when it counts mm-hmm. because i think uh and i guess when i when i think of family i mean everybody has their own idea of what family is mm-hmm. and to me like family is those people you know whether your blood relation or not blood relation or whatnot but they're the it's that group of people that you know no matter what, no matter how much they made you mad, no matter how much you got in a fight five minutes before that, you know, if something's going on, if, if somebody's going through a tough time, if something, you know, comes up in somebody's life or whatever, you're going to be there for them. Right. And I, I just feel like that's the way we need to treat each other in the church because mm-hmm. that's the way the Bible tells us we're to treat everyone around us pretty mm-hmm. much. And if we can't treat the people in the church that way, and how are we supposed to treat other people that aren't in the church to That's right. try and get That's them right. to come to and, church? And one of the biggest things the enemy wants to try to do is he wants to divide the church. He wants to tear it apart. He wants no. to uh, have Christian fighting against Christian. And whatever the, the label of the church over the door is, then uh, sometimes those churches feel like they're the only church. But yet you can have a, a, a church up the street who's teaching the very same thing, just a few different doctrines and or on a different day on a different day yeah (laughs) and for me i'm a firm believer that um, the tenets are what we stand on we stand on you know man comes to the father except by the son you must be born again we believe in Mm -hmm. god his son and his holy spirit Um, we believe that um, we we accept christ he forgives us we ask him to forgive us of our sins um but when, when you start getting all of these different doctrines that say, well, you know, if you don't speak in tongues, you know, you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. If you do speak with tongues, you're filled with uh, an evil spirit. That's a real one yeah. that I tell people to be real careful <laughs> about. Uh, once in grace, always in grace, or you can lose your salvation, or eat meat, don't eat meat, or worship on Saturday or Sunday, or, you know, uh, sleep when you die, absent from the body, present with the Lord. To me, those aren't salvation issues. The salvation issue is, do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, which ties us directly into your message, and do we have a relationship with each other that we stand Mm -hmm. through the toughest of times as they hit all of us? Um, But man, if the enemy can divide the church, well, you don't do this, and I, you shouldn't, I'm going somewhere. And I tell people, you know, yeah, there will be times when, when there'll just be enough you know, differences that they can't be mended. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's what gets tough as a pastor of a church because um, I've got to be a shepherd of the flock and I have to protect the flock. And if I'm wrong, that's okay. I mean, you show me in the Word of God where I'm wrong and I will, I will hear. But if it's just, well, we've done this for the last 75 years and you're not doing it the way that I've done it, my family's done it. I say, okay, show me in the Word where it needs to be done like this and I'll be happy to do that and work with you. But when they just say, well, I don't like this. What don't you like about it? Well, I don't like that you preach the Word. Well, we're going to preach the Word in yeah. this church. And, and you may want to go to a church that they're not preaching the Word. But as for this congregation, we are going to preach the Word. So... Um, I mean, I know you've been doing this for a long time, and this uh-huh. probably never happened to you, but, like, after you get done speaking, you're like, man, I should have used this first, or I should have oh, yeah. found oh, that no. one, or I should have used that. <laughs> yeah, Because yeah. I was, like, thinking about it, and I was like, man, I should have found the verse, because I can't think of it off the top of my head, like, the actual verse, but where it says, like, you know, if you tithe, but you do it without love, it means nothing. It means nothing, yeah. If yeah. you do this without love, it means, like, basically anything you do without, if you don't have, if you don't love, then it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, and see, I, I don't want people to tithe because the church says you will tithe or or else. Or uh, you're not part of the or church. Or you're not a part of the <laughs> church. I want people to tithe because yeah. they know the word of God says that that's what the Lord is asking mm-hmm. of us, of the 100% he entrusts to us, which is his. All he's asking is for 10% back. And mm-hmm. so, um, yeah. 
Um, well, what does this mean when you said um, uh, just guide? I'm just saying, just because it's on here doesn't mean <laughs> You said it, okay. <laughs> but uh, we can go over this. Guide and not rule. Mm -hmm. um, what does that mean? Guide and not rule. I, I think that means, like it said in the verse there, you know, show with your actions. Yeah. You know, show, you're not, you're not there to tell everybody else what to do. You're not there to just be a dictator or be right. somebody who's just, you know, got everybody under their thumb. Mm -hmm. You're there to, you know, lead by example mm -hmm. and, and to, to help other people and guide them in, you know, their Christian walk. Right. Well, isn't that kind of similar to as the Lord loves the church, so too a husband should love his wife, not yeah. to be, as you just said, a dictator, a, mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a lord over your children, or telling them, but to be able to lead by example. And this is what you and I were talking about before the message on Sunday is, is that everything that you share with the congregation, as you as mm -hmm. you're here in this uh, situation. Um, people may come up afterwards and say, well, where is that in the Bible? And if we're not using the scriptures to back it up, it'll mm -hmm. be, well, this is how I feel. Well, tell me, so that I know I feel th certain things too, but can we back it up with the word? And so that's why it's so important to, yeah. to guide and know the word of God. Well, and also if you look at just, you know, every, there's so many things out there. It's like, well, we need to be Christ-like. Well, we need to be Christ-like. We need to be as close to, to Christ as we can in our actions and our behaviors. Well, look at the way Christ was. He never was out there and just being like, you need to do this, this is wrong, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. You know, he did what he did, and people saw what he did, yep. and they followed him yep. for that. There was one spot. But there yeah, there okay, was one okay. spot. I'm not saying say it, it never happened. In, <laughs> but in the temple, in, he in did the, come in. in Don't in, make my father's yeah, okay. house a den of thieves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but he led by example. Overall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He led by example. Yeah. Um, so I'm not going to say there's never going to be a time for that. But. Right. Right. Um, but when you said everyone is, at, this is interesting, everyone at some point is called to be a shepherd. Now, mm -hmm. you've heard me say several times, we're all ministers of the gospel. Now, mm -hmm. is that what you're, you're kind yeah, of Yeah, kind of like, kind of the same thing, but it's just like, whether, whatever that group of people that God says, okay, I want you to, whether it's one person, whether it's five people, a hundred people, a hundred thousand people, mm -hmm. you know, there's going to be either that one person or that group of people that God's going to say, hey, I want you to talk to this person. I want you to help this person through their walk with Christ. Yeah. I want you to help, you know, I want you to help guide this person. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm, that's, that's kind of what I'm getting at is, you know, like you said, every one of us is called to, you know, help and, uh, help preach the word or right. help the well, you know, minister, yeah, minister. and so kind of the same thing just we never know until we're till that moment when God says to us okay this is this is where I'm putting you mm -hmm. I'm putting you in this situation now you need to fulfill your 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 part of the bargain here <laughs> doesn't that go along with what you said guide uh, by example mm -hmm. and 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 the word shepherd as the scripture says uh, called to be a shepherd, uh, those divine appointments that we've talked about before where we're gonna, you're going to meet somebody. Well, you can't call me up and, and say, uh, Pastor Jim, I need you to, to so share with this person this about the gospel <laughs> because God is working through you by his Holy Spirit. And, and the word says, don't worry about what you're going to say. Uh, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ and a child of God, my Holy Spirit will work through you and say things. And there have been mm -hmm. times, I don't know if it happened to you this, this Sunday, but there's times I'm, I'm sharing, I'm preaching, and I'm going, whoa, that one came out of left field. I, that was Holy Spirit led, you know. Um, and it's, it's the, the Holy Spirit will speak through all of us because each mm -hmm. one of us are called to minister. And, and I think that that's where that scripture gets a little bit um, um, confusing when it says um, you're called to be elders, yeah. you know, and shepherds. And, well, I've known some pretty young guys who are, are elders in the faith, their knowledge. And I've got some older guys who, who uh, have, have been in the faith <laughs> forever and ever and ever. And they're not mature. They, they have not grown. Mm -hmm. They have not. They're still on the milk. And that's, so, that, yeah. That's why, to, 
my interpretation of when, when it says elders is not how old you are. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's where you're at in your in your faith. It's yep. where you're at in your walk. That's why we, I also use First Timothy four twelve, where it says, "Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you yeah. live, in your love, in your faith, and in your and your purity." Yeah. That's so I mean, awesome. It doesn't matter how old or young you are, huh. and. If you are that guy that's like, I can't do this, I need Pastor Tim to do this, you still got to get him to church. <laughs> that's right. That's, <laughs> that's, right. that's part of it, yeah. I mean. Yeah. But, but I also kind of mentioned this, like, if you're at work, I know you work here, but that's uh-huh. and for everybody else that yeah. doesn't. Yeah. But if you're at work and you're out there and you're laughing to all the, the dirty and crass jokes out there and you're maybe saying a couple yourself and then you're like, hey guys, let's go to church. And they're going to yeah. look at you and be like, you're the one that needs to go to church. Yeah. Like, what's wrong? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, but if we're not leading by, you know, our example, then trying to reach out to people who see us in a way that oh, yeah. may not be the most Christian way to act, no. they're not going to... It's not just on Sundays. It's not just yeah. when we go to churches. It's every day of the week and, and at school, at work. Um, uh, in our hobbies, everything. It almost, I almost went into that song, at work, at school, I play. <laughs> it's, it's where we're at. It's, it's, uh, this scripture is awesome. Be an example to all believers in what you say. Uh, and, and it doesn't just stop there, but in the way you live. We speak mm-hmm. by the way that we live. And in your love and your faith and your purity. So, yeah, if you're talking about somebody in the church that, you know, what well, did you hear? And, da, 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 and then you're going off over here and you're talking about, you know, the pastor. Or you're talking about sound people or you're talking about people outside the world. And then you come to the altar and he says, oh, God, thank you. Bless me for my faithfulness. Well, I think God's going to be dealing with you, you know, on that. And that's a, that's a very, very important verse. It really is. The lost sheep, Matthew 18, 10 through 14, and Luke 15, well, it's the same. 1 through 7. Yeah, it's essentially the same story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Telling in these different books, backing about, up. Um, well, it's, it's the same parable that Christ told where uh, talking about the, hundred, the shepherd that had 100 sheep, yeah. and he was counting them, and one was, he had 99, one was missing. Mm-hmm. So he said, oh, Oh, well, we'll leave that guy off the no. way, right? That's what he says, right? Yeah. He just said, well, no, this, no he didn't say no. that? Oh, that's no. right. That's right. He didn't say that. Let me ask <laughs> you, was that because the other 99 sheep were mature enough to stay in that fold? And the one went drifting out and going, la, 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 I'm going to go find where I should, more grass on greener on the other side. By the way, you can't afford the grass on the other <laughs> side because you can't afford the water bill or the fertilizer bill, by the way. But, um, and there's a whole lot of fertilizer on the other side of that fence. Um, so, yeah, that story of, of going after that one, working together. Um, and it takes several shepherds. I, yeah. mean, I mean, I was just in a church this last weekend where they have uh, 20 full-time staff members and they have 400 volunteers. And now, that's now, a couple. Now that's, that's a couple. And one person can't do it. Two people can't do it. Uh, you know, and they say, effectively, one man can pastor 100 people. Well, you get to thinking about that, and that's stretching him pretty, that's pretty the, thin. Yeah. You know? I want to know who, who came up with that number. Yeah, well, and then, then others coming alongside, and that's why I appreciate you, and I, I've so appreciated Pastor Randy these last 17 years as as he's walked alongside, as we've walked alongside of each other. Um, and now God is bringing you up and, and, and teaching and showing you. Uh, you shared a little bit about your history. You grew up in the church. No. Um, you, you shared that your daddy was a pastor. And yeah. that you, you, you learned, yeah, oh, believe me, you learned the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, and that's why, that's why pastors' kids, PKs as they call them, uh, sometimes we'll come back and go, I want nothing to do with the church because of the way that the congregation treats their parents, you know, and, no. and, and pushes them up, up against the wall, literally, and they've got to come out swinging and saying things and doing things that normally, you know, a pastor wouldn't be thought to say, but they're human too. Oh, yeah. They're human, just like, you know, everybody. Um, so tell me what you meant when you say... Um, uh, as, a, as young men, 
accepting the authority of the elders, and yet you elaborated a little bit on, on the elders not just being old, mm -hmm. um, but um, the, the, they are as, I'm just kind of reading into this, um, they are literally the anchors. Um, they're, mm. they're trusting in others besides just the pastor. And, and it's, it's kind of helping us to lead into the kickoff of our small groups. You know, that, mm -hmm. like we just said, one man can't effectively pastor, you know, even a hundred people because there's so many. And if you want small groups to come into there, then you want uh, Sunday school classes, quote, quote, and you want um, people to handle, the, you know, the ministry of the building and the, the ministry of outreach and the ministry of missions. And all of these mm -hmm. takes uh, more than, more than one, person. one person, more than one person. And so... Uh, anchors. We all need anchors and not just one. Acts 27, 28, and 29. Um, you know that story? Tell us. <laughs> tell us. Tell us about that. So, uh, this is uh, when Paul was on a ship and they dropped a weighted line and, and found that it was 120 feet deep. Mm -hmm. uh, but a little while later, they had measured again and it was only 90 feet deep so they knew they were about to run aground or get run ashore or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So at that rate they were afraid they were soon to be driven against the rocks. Of course it's getting shallower and shallower. Right. right. So how many boat how many anchors do you have on a boat? How many anchors? I mean I should say a ship not a boat. Yeah a ship. A ship. I would think you couldn't have too many. I would think that you, yeah. you know, four or five anchors that, because well, one anchor is not going to hold one of those big tankers. They've got, oh yeah. they've got. Oh, they got them all, all along, the, all, like all around the whole thing. Yeah. But, yeah, so the boat they were on, they had eight anchors on it. Mm -hmm. So they threw the four off the back, hoping to hold them in place. And before they threw the four off the front, they were about ready to get out of there and say, no, we're going to drop the lifeboat and we're getting out of here. Uh -huh. Paul basically told them, what are you guys doing? Why are you guys so worried? Mm -hmm. He goes, throw the four off the front. Let's go have some dinner. <laughs> you guys haven't eaten in weeks. Uh -huh. And, yeah. I love that. kind of calmed everybody down. Uh -huh. I love it's that. like, put your anchors in. You'll be fine. Yeah. So. And prayed for daylight. Throw out the four anchors from the back of the ship, and they prayed for daylight. Yeah, I, I read farther, but I didn't put it on there. But uh -huh. yeah, essentially, essentially he tells them they they drop the lifeboat, and he like goes to them and basically says, "What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Why are you guys so worried?" Mm -hmm. So they wind up cutting the lifeboats off, letting the lifeboats go. They throw the four anchors off the front, and they go eat dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd have cut the, the lifeboats off unless they were just waiting down the ship. I think that I think if they would have left them, they swamped. with with the with the storm they were in, uh, if it was that bad, one of two things is going to happen: either your lifeboat's going to be nothing because it's going to be smashing into the side of your boat, yeah. or it's going to be smashing into the side of your boat and put a hole in the side uh -huh. of your boat. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's wood on wood, so one of the two is going to have to give. So, so it was really an uh, act of faith in saying, you know, yep. now listen, you know these anchors will hold. My anchor holds. You know, we've mm -hmm. sung that song uh, many, many times. Um, so when you say we all need anchors and not mm -hmm. just one, uh, elaborate what you, what, how you went so into that. So I guess um, the way I, a lot of people see it when they read about anchors or whatnot or they think about it, it's like, oh, well, Christ is your anchor. He's what you anchor, or, or the Word of God is your anchor. And, and that can be fine for some people, but the, way, the Bible also says that Christ is a solid rock. He's our firm foundation. So if He's our firm foundation, how can, how can we anchor to the firm foundation with the firm foundation? That doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in my mind, our anchors have to be those leaders around us, whether it's a small group leader pastor, youth pastor, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But those people who we look to for guidance, those people that we look to for help in those in those hard times, those are the people that are I, I see as our anchors. Mm -hmm. Because so yeah, because a the lot more of times, those people you have to reach out to or to throw out and hope and hope one of them grabs onto that mm -hmm. that 
you know, solid rock at the bottom of the ocean. Well, we hope that all of our anchors in we the hope. church are yeah. solidly anchored to that rock. Because you're right. A lot of people think, well, my, my anchor, the anchor is the Lord. No, the anchor is really the men and women that believe in Christ that are anchored to the Lord. And the way that you've done, you've, you've stated it here, that they are, they are building, they are, they are connecting, they are uh, 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 bringing people to Christ. And I think that's, that's the healthy church when a church is growing and, and people are coming into the church because of others who are speaking to them and telling them to come. And then uh, whomever is, is speaking that morning, bringing a salvation message. And you know me well enough that I believe every time we have a Sunday service that we need to present the gospel in a way that they can accept the Lord as their Savior and come into a relationship with Him. Um, when you said cornerstone in relation yeah. to architect, a cornerstone is traditionally the first stone laid for the structure with all the stones laid in references. Um, so I was just kind of, I, 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 I passed over that part. Did you? But that's okay. Let's hit on it. Let's hit on it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so I was kind of going off of the, the, the solid rock kind of motif, but also like it just so happened that one of the songs that we sang on Sunday talked about Christ being our cornerstone. Mm -hmm. And I just, I never actually looked up what a cornerstone was. Yeah. So I thought I'd look it up. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, thought it was interesting that, you know, there's, there's a couple of different meetings. Mm -hmm. One is a cornerstone is that first stone that's Slay. laid mm -hmm. and that like it says here it, that actually gives direction and like location of the building mm -hmm. so that actually tells where the building's located and what direction that building's facing mm -hmm. so i mean saying christ is our cornerstone that says where we are and where we're going mm -hmm. what direction we're facing right yep the other thing it, that talks about with cornerstones, other definition says it is a it is a stone that joins two opposing walls. Mm -hmm. So you have two different sides coming together, and your cornerstone is what can join what joins those two sides together. So I thought that was interesting. You know the the building of the temple. Uh, if you go back and um, the the quarry masters were making the stones for the temple. And they, they set that cornerstone. But, um, and I'd really like the research to see if this is true, but it makes a great story. Is that, <laughs> that cornerstone for the temple was set, but they had to set everything, build everything around. So they mm -hmm. knew where the cornerstone was. So yep. they moved the cornerstone out of the way. And what happened is, is that it rolled over a hill, went down, and, was sitting, and when they, they got ready, um, the, the, and the pro I think I was just sitting here thinking as you were saying this so many times we say okay man I am built on the cornerstone of Jesus Christ he is my rock he is my and then we get into the world and we forget about that cornerstone and no. we go we start building it and they ended up finding it bringing it back up and putting it in place and uh, they would have been far wiser to have never Moved kicked it. that stone <laughs> out of the way because I don't know how they got all of their, their true bearings if yeah. that thing is out of place. But uh, that, is, that is awesome with that, the cornerstone story. Um, and, and then it leads into the leaders uh, of the anchors. I, Christ is our cornerstone. I'm not the head of this church. You know, Josh, uh, this is not my church. Um, this is God's church. And we've come to the conclusion that we can't save anybody. Uh, what it is, is is that we are used as, uh, yeah, really, <laughs> we are used as vessels and instruments that God can use to share the gospel uh, and that draw all men unto Christ. And that leads us to another, will everybody accept Christ? No, everybody won't. But Free will. But free will, <laughs> and I'm not going to choose who's going to hear it, who's not going to hear it, and, uh, you know, but I am going to share the gospel to everyone. And, mm -hmm. and as you're, you're sharing with this, um, uh, the, the men and women in our church, um, Christ is our cornerstone. Yeah, I'm the shepherd of the, the church, but God is bringing men and women around, uh, not to become under shepherds, not to become, but to be um, 
uh, a part of the anchoring system that people, because uh, Josh, you'll reach people that I'll, I'll never meet, you know. Um, you invite people, uh, Matt invites people, Steve invites people that I will never come in contact with. But when they come in here, now we have an opportunity to, to meet. And so mm -hmm. that leads you into the small groups, uh, mm -hmm. providing connection or links to the chain. Okay, share with us a little bit about what your thinking was on that. And uh, since small groups provide connections, uh, well, when you throw an anchor off, you don't just throw an anchor and it's in not the water. connected to anything. You just throw it in the water and go, hey, the boat's going to stay put. Well, there's uh -huh. nothing holding the anchor to the boat. Well, uh-huh, uh-huh. I mean. Which reminds me of a friend of mine. I went, I went fishing with him, and he had the most beautiful anchor. He just bought it, just got this thing. And he says, this one will hold our boat. And it was, it was, uh, it was tied to the boat. It was tied to the boat. But on the other end, he had, he had something like a little hook on it, uh, and it was hooked solid. But the rope tied to that little carabiner or whatever <laughs> was not tied properly. And so we're, we're out there, and he's thinking, we're solid. And then he looks around, and he goes, man, we are really drifting. What's wrong with that new anchor? And, one and, open, it's and, just the rope. Yeah, one of my girls looked out, and they said, um, uh, is that... Is, is the rope supposed to just be floating on the top of the water like that? And they, oh, no, he said, no, I didn't tie it tight. So um, this is a part of, of tying to that anchor, mm -hmm. uh, but making sure that it's tied tight. And mm -hmm. now, now share with me, because I just want to share that story, oh. the, the links, the chain. So, the... so, I mean, when you talk, to me, like, when you look at a small group, you have the leader of the small group who is there for that anchor, that anchorage point mm -hmm. for that group of people. But all those groups of people, that group of, the whole group of people there, it's not just like, oh, you have to rely on the leader. You have to rely on that. You have to rely, be able to rely on everybody. Right. You know? So I think, I, not, I don't want to leave all those people out of there because they're all important too. Just like, the, you know, everyone talks about the anchor, not the chain or the rope that's right. holding it. Yeah. But that's just as important as the anchor itself. It's all, part so of it. it's all a part of that connection. It's just it's all a part of one system, one unit. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so everybody working together. Why, why do you think churches should have small groups? I mean, you just said the, the links and everything. But, yeah. but is, it, is it a study of the word? Is it um, uh, taking like what we do is we'll take our Sunday morning messages and then like our men's group on Monday night, we'll talk about that. Uh, our ladies on Tuesday will mm -hmm. share on that. I share with it Tuesday mornings with our, our men's group at the restaurant. Um, but I know that there are, there is, when, when I, uh, I, was, I was watching something the other day and a televangelist came on, he was with about four or five other guys. And they were just taking scripture and talking about um, what they felt the word of God meant by that. Now you can go with a mm -hmm. study, you can go just off a of discussion, you can, uh, uh, but I think there has to be a foundation that you're coming, that's mm -hmm. a solid to go back to on the Word of God um, and to be able to come out of those small groups stronger. And mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, can you have a, 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 a small group uh, uh, that studies the Word who is responsible for our building? Can you have a small group who's responsible for our, for our, our homeless outreach ministry? Do you have a yeah. small group for uh, for men, for women, for boys, for girls, for, you know, I think you could have a number uh, because a lot of times churches are getting away from uh, from the Sunday school, and really this is what's what's becoming. It's becoming mm -hmm. the 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 connection. Yeah. You know. And one thing that I kind of used on Sunday was like a lot of people grew up going to youth group, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well. When when typically is youth group? Wednesday night. Ninety percent of the time. Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Yep. And why is that? Well, it's the middle of the week. Uh -huh. You went to church on Sunday. You came out. And you're like, yeah, we're good to go. And maybe you woke up the next day and you're just like, oh, we're back to school. Uh huh. And then you had Wednesday, so you can kind of get refresher, that refresher yeah. in the yeah. middle of the week and yeah. get. And so I think that's what small groups can be too. Is that uh -huh. middle of the week or sometime throughout the week? you know, a little bit refreshing, get back with, you know, Christians, your peers. Or oh, yeah, and, yeah, you get bombarded and, by the world, and oh, yeah. And this um, is where I kind of also, you know, feel like, you know, I could talk about the fact that, you know, the small group, um, the leaders in those small groups, 
like you're saying, they could be, you could do a study, you could talk about the sermon, you, there's all kinds of things, but that, like we've talked about where this kind of whole thing is going as far as trying to get people who want to be leaders of right. the small groups. Right. But we all need to be, we, as, as the staff here and the leaders of the small group, we all need to be on the same page Amen. as far as what direction we're going to take those small groups, whether yeah. it's, you know, and, and make sure that the people who are going to lead the small groups are strong grounded. enough, grounded. Are, are grounded mm -hmm. enough that, you know, because it's so easy to get in. You're with your buddies or you're with your friends and you just start talking all of a sudden an hour and a half goes by and you're like, oh, I guess it's time maybe to go we home. Should or we should and, talk or about maybe the word. Maybe we should talk maybe. about something <laughs> about, yeah. So we got to make sure that, you know, the person that's going to be leading the small group is like a strong, strong enough in, in Christ that they're going to be like, all right, I know we're having a good time, but we got to get... Yeah. Oh, it's like on our Tuesday morning. I mean, man, if we're not careful, we get to talking about all sorts of, of, of other things. And we got we to gotta refocus, come back to, to mm -hmm. what we are. Like if we're talking about the power of Christ in our lives, you know, and you go off and start talking about politics and how powerful politics are. No, the power of Christ in our lives, not the power of your, the GOP or the, the Democrats or the power of Christ. And this scripture... Um, uh, you were you were also saying to motivate to spur on one another and man the mm -hmm. world sure tries to spur us on to go the wrong direction to have the wrong thoughts but um, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works I don't just stop there real quick I know we're getting close to ending but <laughs> it just it struck me really crazy this last week and then people are going to go if and when they watch this you know months from now they're going to what now the academy awards what well there's a there's a program you know, oh, that yes. acknowledges Let's, might the, as well bring it up yeah right? acknowledges <laughs> you know all the 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 love within the community and all of this and and in the middle of this show one of the comedians comes out and says something against another actor's wife, which was, mm -hmm. was every, they do it all the time. They roast everybody oh, yeah. all the time. And boy, this guy got up and he, he came up on the stage and slapped the comedian. Mm -hmm. And um, the Academy came back and they said this, which I thought was really funny. We don't promote or condone, condone violence. And three quarters of the movies that are produced in Hollywood are either blood, guts, gore, death, mayhem, all of this stuff. But think about it. we don't promote, you know, um, this 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 hate. Actual violence. Actual, <laughs> yeah, actual <laughs> violence. And then the actor got up and and, and he apologized and he's to the Academy at least. And he said, um, I just want to let you know that uh, we need more love and we need more forgiveness and we need. And so here Hebrews is let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Has the church fallen down on that? Has the church lost its focus? And I mean, I'm a pastor. And I'm talking about our church now. I mean, no. have we lost our focus? Do we need to get back in back uh, focused into what this scripture says? Um, encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, I, I look at that and I, I thought about that, that program on Sunday. And I thought about what you were, you're preaching about. We as the body of believers need to motivate each other on. I don't care if your, your background is Assembly of God. I don't care if you're Lutheran or Methodist or, or, or uh, Church of God or Assembly of God or Nazarene. And by the way, our Easter uh, morning service out at the park mm -hmm. is going to have an Assembly of God pastor, going to have a Nazarene pastor, going to have a Baptist pastor, and also going to have a, did I say Methodist? Methodist, Assembly, Nazarene, and Baptist. Uh, four guys are going to be out there. And it's time, guys and gals, we come back together as believers, not just what's over the, the, the door, but our tenants and our faith. Well, I just um, thought it was kind of funny you brought that up because, mm -hmm. like, on Sunday I was saying, you know, we are great at tearing each other down. Oh, man. I was like, oh, yeah. there's people that make a living going out there and just tearing tearing people down. Mm -hmm. They're called comedians. Uh -huh. You go to a comedy show, they're going to if you if they if you're within view 
as a comedian, there's 90% chance he's going to say something about you, and it's probably not going to be something that's going to be uh, real funny real to fun, you. you know, uh, remember Don Rickles. Everybody else is Remember Don laugh. Rickles. He tore down everybody. No one was safe when yeah. Rickles was there, and, and that's and, what happened the other night. And that's, and, that's, and that's, I think, the problem is it's just become accepted, mm -hmm. and it's just become acceptable in, in our, at least in this country, that, you know, yeah, but, just, but, but yet, remember, they say they don't condemn <laughs> or condone, you no, know, tearing saying, down no, people. No, I, I'm not the, even talking about that whole I know, but, I, but the real. church, look at Romans 15, yeah. 2. What's that one say? Read that to me. It says, we should help others do what is right and build them up in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I think, I think that is so key. So that's why we're wanting to start small groups. That's why yeah. we're wanting to get... Uh, uh, men and women were uh, holding uh, leadership uh, class. We're not just going to throw people into groups. And no. you know, for the last several years, I mean, we say, "Hey, who wants to get involved in a small group?" <laughs> we want to we want to build a foundation of this. And uh, I, I I believe it's the infrastructure. I've always felt this: mm -hmm. the infrastructure of the church. And so um, uh, I appreciate your your message this Sunday. Uh, I was in Milwaukee. I had a chance to listen to it. Did you get any power it. tool? Uh, no, no just... but I, I, yes, I did. I came back myself. Oh. I'll, I'll show you later. <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, it's so powerful, guys and gals, that we uh, continue moving and growing and becoming more and more what God wants us to become. Uh, not stay stagnant, uh, not just stay on the milk, but get into the meat of the word. And because in those small groups, if your leader of the small group does not know the word of God, you could have somebody in that group and says, yeah, but wait a minute, isn't it, it doesn't this, and take a scripture out of context. And if you mm. don't know that scripture and where it's coming out of, yeah, oh my goodness. Wow. Well, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe we need to look at that. I mean, but to be able to, to guide and to be able to lead. And so, um, any summarization on your message? Oh, I just, Sunday? Um, I just think, that it's important to me anyways, because I was in a small group with my wife years and years ago yeah. with a whole bunch of other couples and we were the youngest ones by like 30 years. Yeah. And, and that's why I think, I think small groups should be more like that. We get, we tend to get in a niche where like, Oh, well, here's all the single yeah. guys and here's yeah. all the single ladies and here's all the, you know, young married couples and here's all the old married couples it's like <laughs> we need to find other ways of like getting together whether it's you know hey we all like playing disc golf let's uh -huh. go do a small group and we'll go play disc golf and and talk about jesus or yeah. or we all like barbecue let's let's do one of this like every week we'll like get together and have barbecue yeah or whatever this like something that's not necessarily like your relationship status or your age right so that you get a group of people who's not all the same age and that the older people can maybe help out the younger people with certain things they're coming mm -hmm. through or vice versa or whatever the case may be. I think like, I think it, uh, if we can get our small groups and in interests, not necessarily in like right. base them off of like, oh, I'm sorry. I know you want to come to this one because it's right. the only one available well, in, in the time frame that you have. Yeah. But and it might be the just the, um, the married couples from 20 to 25. Well, the study, the study of uh, the book of John, you know, yeah. well, that's going to be younger, older, middle, you know, you want to study yeah. uh, James. You know, it's, it's not, you know, well, no, this is just a young people's group. No, it's open to everybody. Uh, and you can have four or five studies going on at the same time in the different books of the Bible. And mm -hmm. once you get through that, you move to the, another one and that group moves, you know, you yeah, go whichever. to where your interest is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Just think. Well, thank you again for joining us tonight, and uh, we will be back here uh, Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, uh, for our first service, and 10.30 for our second service. Uh, we are looking forward to seeing you. If you're in the area, you're not attending a church somewhere, please come and join us. Uh, if you are attending a church, plug in, get involved, and be where God has put you. Also, tell everybody within our community about the Easter uh, Resurrection Sunday morning service at 6.30 at Pioneer Park. We are looking forward to four or 500 people gathering there in the park Sunday morning and worshiping the Lord together. By the way, if you love to sing, uh, please contact the church because we're putting together a choir for that morning, and we would love to have you be a part of it. And if you have a yard or know somebody that has a yard, yes, we have signs that you can put up so that you... 
because it'll the sign will tell more people than you could ever tell. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And so uh, call the church and let us know that you'd like to get some of those. So from all of us here, uh, the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you, give you peace until we're all together again. Good night, everybody.